and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm back with some Lindsay Nicole. So this is uh, animals that can become almost indestructible. The thumbnail had like a tardigrade on there. So I'm hoping that we're going to talk about tardigrades because I adore tardigrades. <laughs> but I want to know about other ones as well. I feel like maybe she'll mention roaches as sort of like a, a nod to the theory or like the joke that roaches will survive a nuclear blast or whatever. But Either way, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect here. I'm going to learn a bunch of animals that like are very hard to kill. And look how young she is. This is like a year or so ago. This is an older video. How long ago was this? Two years ago. Dang. Dang, two years ago. Look at her. Her setup is different now. Anyway, let's go. Happening inside your moss. Have you ever wondered what's happening inside your moss? Or how about a puddle? If you're lucky, Tardigrades. Tardigrades Dang. might be in your moss. They're microscopic animals that are typically about half a millimeter long and are pretty cute, but also absolutely sick because they have a superpower that allows them to survive the seemingly unsurvivable, and it's called cryptobiosis. And that cryptobiosis. is what we're getting into today. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. I have so much to say because I was someone who went into my zoology major with a subpar understanding of animals. I didn't know sponges were animals or insects and don't even get me started on coral. So learning about something like cryptobiosis in a university classroom was like, what planet am I on right now? All right, let's get a general understanding of cryptobiosis out okay. of the way. Right, don't worry. Do I have a lot to say about tardigrades, but Quick facts first. So the term cryptobiosis is defined as the state of an organism when it shows no visible signs of life in response to unfavorable environmental conditions. All metabolic activity stops. They don't reproduce, they don't grow, they don't repair anything. Essentially, if what's happening around them is physiologically okay. unpleasant, they drop a step away from dead and can stay like this way for a long time until the environment becomes more favorable again. Let's put it this way. Cryptobiosis is kind of like putting your life on pause. Could you imagine if humans could do this? Dude, we'd be so dramatic about it. LA transplants would go into cryptobiosis if their matcha tea was made with soy milk instead of oat. But the reality is they cryptobiosis <laughs> allows organisms to survive events that we would immediately die in. Immediately. And there's a few different forms of cryptobiosis. I've heard of things like they can survive the vacuum, the tardigrades. I guess we're only talking about tardigrades. I thought we might talk about other types of creatures too. Not sure. But like they can survive in the vacuum of space. Like you just bring them back and then heat them up and they're fine. <laughs> like, I mean, humans have done like a minor version of this, I guess, you know, it's like people will like be frozen for X amount of minutes or whatever, and then come back. You, you know, it's not like as extreme as like what Captain America went through when he was so frozen for 70 years and then came back. But like people have been like dead outside for like many, many minutes. I don't know if it's been like a day, but like they, they, they managed to bring them back that can occur. There's Osmo. Usually when they've been frozen, it's like cold though. I'm not, not talking about like drowning and then you like um, make them cough off the water. I'm talking about like they were frozen to death and then they were able to bring them back. Biosis in response to increased solute concentration. Too much salt. Chemobiosis in response to toxins. Too much chemicals. Cryobiosis in response to decreased temperatures. Too much cold. Too much cold. In response to- It is what, what is the temperature outside today? I'm checking. Yesterday, I got to like seven. Today, it's 10. Ooh, it's 10 degrees outside today. I have to go to the store. Too little to no oxygen. Too much no oxygen. And the one we're most familiar with and have studied the most is anhydrobiosis little to no oxygen, too much okay. no oxygen. And the one we're most too familiar much no with oxygen. and have studied the most is anhydrobiosis, AKA desiccation, AKA drying out in response to their habitat drying up. Too much dry. Think about the little tardigrades in the moss or the puddle that might sit in the sun for too long. This is where anhydrobiosis comes in handy. Now you might be thinking, Lindsay, you just made shit way too complicated. Too many nope. terms. Don't worry, I'm not gonna use like it ever again. Cause I don't, I, I don't wanna deal with that either. From this point on, I will use the umbrella term cryptobiosis, but just okay. know there's different forms of it for different situations. Okay. Cool. So what kind of organisms do cryptobiosis? Tardigrades, of course, nematodes, rotifers, Ooh, brine nematodes. shrimp, even one insect called the sleeping chironomid, chironomid. but also most chironomid. plant seeds, which are packed with nutrients and extremely oh. resilient to environment. Is this how like, is this how, uh, like, like, you know, you can have a seeds that like years later will suddenly grow. Is that how that works? Didn't they like kind of do that? They like found seeds that had been like frozen in amber or something and then they grew them. Am I crazy? Did I imagine that? Is that something that's something they would do? I feel like there's a flower or something that was like extinct, but they found like a seed of it preserved and they were able to grow it. Am I nuts? Am I crazy? Yes. Look, look, look. 
Artnet News says researchers grow extinct plant from a thousand year old seed. The seed is called Sheba and is believed to have medicinal qualities. So, okay. So, yeah, yeah, I was correct. I'm not crazy. I knew I'd read about that. Ha ha. Okay, great. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure because I was like, I feel like. So, I think it's the same thing, right? Small stressors and is one of the reasons why birds and small mammals were able to survive the KPG mass extinction, the dinosaur killing asteroid. They were able to dig up seeds and eat them. Also, microorganisms like yeast and bacterial spores and amoebas, but we're going to focus on the animals. All right, let's get yeah. into the tardigrades. A lot of the following footage Gion will be putting here was shot by my friend Chloe aka Ooh. Tarda Babe on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. She's okay. a microbio student from Montreal that gets phenomenal footage of their microbursts, a microscopic world. She has these neon clips of nematodes oh, and that's so cool. And, and more. It's so sick. I oh, those are beautiful. I've through all of her content. So definitely check it out if you want your day to be a million times better. Babe. And thank you, okay. Chloe, for letting me use some of it for this video. So, like I had said, tardigrades are little tiny microscopic animals. They have eight legs and I guess kind of resemble bears, hence yeah, the water do. bear. But they're also called moss piglets. When existing normally, moving around and stuff, they're made up of over 90% water and require at least a thin layer of water Look surrounding them. Go. So they're technically considered an aquatic species and they're found in all aquatic environments from puddles to wet moss to the deep sea. But they've also been found in sand dunes, Antarctica, and active lava fields. So how the fuck can they do that? Well, cryptobiosis, obviously. But how? Let's take the puddle example, which will eventually dry out. So the tardigrade must undergo the form of cryptobiosis to prevent desiccation. It curls up into this tiny ball called a ton. Think of turning into a ton as pretty much shrinking into this raisin made of steel but the steel is sugar. More than 95% of the water in their body is lost and replaced with a, how do I pronounce that? Trahalos. Oh, I never would have guessed that. And replaced with a protective sugar called trahalos, along trahalos. with other really important protective proteins. And once yeah, I would have said like trahalos. And they are a ton. Their metabolism can lower to less than- I like that it looks like a little grenade. And once the process Look, it looks like a little, I mean, it also looks like a raisin. She's right about that, but it looks like a little grenade. <laughs> is done and they are a ton their metabolism can lower to less than 0.1 percent of what it was before they are like i said before practically dead and once their environment goes back to normal the water seeps back in like a breath of fresh yeah. air and they just go about their business that Look alone at him is go. pretty crazy it doesn't need to get any cooler than that but it does i've compiled a list of conditions that tardigrades have survived due to the powers of cryptobiosis and this is not nearly a complete list they've survived environments with no oxygen and no water temperatures as high as 304 degrees fahrenheit and as low Dang. as negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit. They've been chilled in liquid helium to negative 457 degrees Fahrenheit, survived boiling alcohol, levels of x-ray radiation a thousand times the lethal human dose, pressures six times the pressures of the deepest parts of the ocean, and even the vacuum of outer space. And just yeah, last year, in space. 2021, scientists discovered they could survive being shot out of a high-speed... This is older than two years. Like, last, if, if she was doing this in 2022, last year in 2021... Okay, I guess it's 20, it's, it's only just barely 2025. Gun. Which at that point, what the fuck? Are you drunk? Well, their survival <laughs> no, they're survival are unheard of. It doesn't mean that they're indestructible. They're made of the same basic compounds that we are, and anything that can obliterate those compounds can obliterate a tardigrade. And most of the experiments understanding their survivability that I just listed also came, of course, with an understanding of the limits that do wipe them out. For example, the high-speed gun. They determined they could survive impact speeds of almost 3,000 feet per second, but anything beyond that, they're toast. Okay, so okay. how long can a tardigrade Still. survive in their ton state? It's kind of hard to pinpoint since we can't manipulate time like that yet. But they have been known to survive for years as a time, with exceptional cases reaching beyond a decade. 100 years is often a number that gets thrown around when talking about them, but it seems to be an exaggeration. But over a still. decade with no food or energy input is still, still. bananas. But the next animal I'm going to tell you about will make that amount of time seem microscopic. Rotifers. Okay. You might have never heard of them. Rotifers. They're unfortunately rarely talked about. They're microscopic filter feeding animals found in freshwater habitats and also huh. sometimes moss like tardigrades. Ooh, the name Rotifer too. means wheelbarrow and refers to their corona, a crown of cilia around their mouth that beat rapidly in a way that looks like spinning wheels sometimes. Oh, that is kind of cool. They look little drills. Or, or, drills? A good chunk of species also take part in cryptobiotic capabilities. And for a long time, it was thought they could survive in that state for six to 10 years. Until 2021, a frozen rotifer was dug up from Siberian permafrost. Scientists allowed it to thaw out and it started moving around, eating, and asexually reproducing. How old Shit. was that permafrost, you might ask? It was radiocarbon dated to 24 thousand years old. Oh the rotifer God. underwent cryptobiosis during the fucking ice age, stayed frozen that way for 24,000 years, and then regained life in a lab surrounded by scientists and technology and gadgets and shit. Dude, it's like that episode of SpongeBob. Future. 
Okay, so you might be thinking, That's how crazy. do you know it wasn't contaminated? What if a rotifer from today contaminated that piece of ground? And luckily the scientists addressed that in the paper. They sequenced the genetic material of the entire core fragment the rotifer was found in. And by identifying and comparing different gene sequences and science that would make this video two hours long, they determined it was not contamination. And okay, so the what I got from that was they scienced the shit out of it and determined it wasn't contaminated. I have no idea what she said. Something about gene cores. Biology, I'm so bad at it. I was, I mean, science in general. I'm bad at science in general. Always was. It's fine. I've come to terms with that. But they did science on it. That's how they knew. The rotifer was just fucking there for 24,000 years, making it the longest verified time an animal has spent in a cryptobiotic state that we know of. I said verified because there's another animal that supposedly exceeds this record by over 15,000 years. A Whoa. Nematode. Nematodes or roundworms are an extremely diverse group of animals, okay. some of the most abundant animals on Earth. And they're found in practically every environment possible, including the insides of humans and other animals as parasites. They range from microscopic to 28 feet long as parasites. In that was one? That's with. one? That jar of spaghetti is one worm please tell me that's not one worm please 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 tell me that's not just one tell me i i can't if that's one worm i'm just gonna go with the fact that that's just pasta i think that's just don't eat it don't eat it oh no oh no i've made it so much worse for myself why did i do that why did i, I need to stop and some possess the ability to do cryptobiosis. Back in 2018, a group of scientists in Siberia found nematodes in two samples of permafrost that dated to 32,000 years old and 41,000 years old. They were thawed out and then started moving around and eating. So then are they actually the record holders of the longest time spent in cryptobiosis? A nematologist named Robin M. Giblin Davis, a nematode expert, said that this is theoretically possible, being frozen and protected from physical damage and not really using any energy to stay alive. I mean, why not? But contamination is also a huge possibility. The team did ensure sterility in their own procedures. And they listed multiple reasons why the nematodes wouldn't have been able to burrow into those depths of permafrost. But I don't know. I'll include a link to the paper if you want to read it and tell me what you think. And before no. I go, I want to show you some things that I made. This beanie and a coloring book. If it's you don't cute. know my short form content, this might be a little confusing, but this is a deep sea telescope fish and I call him my son. And I've been making videos of him He's since I first started TikTok over two years ago. And people shit on him a lot, so I put him on a beanie to spite them all. And I also I made want... this coloring book for I my spooky it. specimen series that I did through October. This is the second coloring book that I've made. Where's my other one? Oh, it's right here. This is the first one I made. This is the second one. This one's new and improved. I was able to work out the kinks of the first one. It includes all the animals from the series that I did throughout October. So 31 specimens. There's one place in here, technically. And descriptions that I wrote of each one. I had so much fun making these dudes. So if you're so interested, cute. you can check it out uh, in the link provided to snag it. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe so, so you don't miss my next long form video coming up next week. And you can keep up with my daily short form content on Instagram and TikTok. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya. Bye. I've only seen her long form content, but I do really, really enjoy it. So I like the little, and I like spooky shit. Like I'm a spooky babe. I was looking for my uh, like planner because <laughs> it's got skulls and stuff on it, but I didn't know where I put it. It's fine. I don't need to find it. It's cool. It's a cool little thing. So enjoy that. I'm going to enjoy it. So thank you again for watching. Sorry for my little mini freak out there. Didn't like that thing with the, the, the worm. 28 feet long is long. And I just really hope that that was not the picture that she was talking about. Anyway, uh, that's going to haunt me. It's going to haunt me. So I uh, hope it doesn't haunt you. And I'll see. You. And I'm glad we got to talk about tardigrades for a while because I really do enjoy tardigrades. I find them a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.